Dina, you are just in time for the finish. There. How many times must I tell you? I understand nothing about chess. Just like watching the expressions on your faces. Falling, let's watch your move, eh? I think it's time to go back to work. We finish this game tomorrow. <laughs> you see? He's beaten. That's what you think. You wait until tomorrow. Come on. One move, one move, we finish the game. Eh? Tomorrow. Today. Oh, you've been playing this game three weeks. What difference can one day make? Come on, one move. Just one move, Clint. Who is boss? You are. So when I say it's time to go back to work, it's time. Time to go back huh? to work. All right, then. Tomorrow, tomorrow, I finish you, all right? Gina. Got the board. Don't let him near it, eh? Oh, Gina, leave him alone. Get on to work. Stop drinking tea. Get on to work. All right, then. Come on. It's time to go back to work. I want another cup of tea. It's nearly two o'clock. Mr. Kletz will be angry. What have you got against me? You haven't drunk your first cup yet. It's cold. It was hot when I brought it. It was, but it had something in it. A hair. A long black hair. It was greasy, too. Do all the girls put grease on their hair in your country? Always something to complain about. Not this time. Just a warning. It's a dirty habit. We don't like it. So next time you'll know, won't you? Go back to work. Do you know who I am? Yes, you work here. That's only a cover. I'm keeping an eye on him. I'm keeping an eye on all you foreigners, for the government. You make up silly stories. I'm a special agent. It's my job to report on all foreigners in the country. You are a silly boy who works for Mr. Kletz. Now go back to work. What a shame. Still, it was only a game, wasn't it? Uh, this is report. Don't rush, Miss Whitford. He needs your organization. Good time. If you just sign it, sir. By the way, are we making any progress on the Chester Place jewel robbery? We're making the usual checks. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Immoral has two ends, Sergeant, not one. It just needs your signature, sir. It's all routine. I can read, Sergeant. I'll get it off, sir. My words, Swift, you are eager. Are you taking your lady friend out again? No, sir. You must excuse me if I seem inquisitive, but you've done nothing but look at your watch all day. It's my first free weekend in two months. Sir. Ah, and I presume you've made some exciting plans for it. Will that be all, sir? No, it's a pity about the Chester Place inquiry. I was hoping to have something to tell the Commissioner. Yes, sir. And I see you still have three places to check. When I thought on Monday morning, sir. The Commissioner is an impatient man, Swift, almost as impatient as you are. But do you think we shall find anything in those places? And shall we say that I'm keeping an open mind? Oh, and enjoy your weekend, Swift. Do come in. Oh, thank you. That's very kind of you. My husband should be home in a few minutes. I didn't know Mr. Brand was married. <laughs> he is a little forgetful about it sometimes. I'm sorry, I didn't get your name. Miller. Harold Miller. Well, do sit down. Thank you. Have you known Tony long? Oh, no, you're going away. Yes, we are, as a matter of fact. We're going to Paris tomorrow. Oh, not to Athens. Oh, no, I wish we were. I picked these up at a travel agent. I've never been to Greece. A very interesting city, Athens. So much history. I mean, so many things have happened there. Yes. Hmm. Would you like a drink while you're waiting? Oh, thank you. Sherry? Thanks very much. Are you and Tony old friends? Well, he's been a good friend to me. I was practically down and out when I ran into him the other day. He lent me some money. He's arranged for me to have a job in this organization he runs. Human rights? Yes. Oh, he's told you about it, has he? No. No, he didn't mention it. Hmm. Hiding his light under a bushel. It's very like him, isn't it? Is it? Cheers. Cheers. Yes, he's always been a very secretive sort of chap. Hmm? 
We were in the army together, in Greece. We were both taken prisoner by the Greek rebel forces. Still, I don't suppose he talks about that much either, does he? No, not very often. Thank you very much. Well, that sounds like him now. Hi, darling. Darling? Hey, Mila, what are you doing here? We had an appointment. At the office. I gave up waiting for you. Oh, how stupid of me. I could have sworn you said at your home. I never gave you this address. I got it out of the phone book. I'm very glad I did, really. It gave me a chance to meet your wife. Yes. Mrs. Brand and I have been talking over old times together. About the war. Yes, well, now that you're here, we can go into the study. Will you excuse us, Mr. Miller darling? tells me he's going to be working for human rights, darling. Yes, he's going to handle some public relations for us. Well, don't bother to go off into the study for my sake. You know, I'm always interested in human rights. <laughs> hey, you can bring your drink with you, Miller. Oh. Glad to have met you, Mrs. Brand. Yes, uh, I think it's for me, darling. Uh, yes? Uh, hello? Oh, just hold on a moment, will you please? Yes, it is. Uh, for me. Oh. We all have our little secrets, Tony. That's right. Yes? Hello? No. Quite alone. Oh. I don't mind. Half past eight's all right. Yes, I've got some work to finish, too. Where are we going? Why be so mysterious about it? All right. I'll be there. You know, Yannick, I think sometimes this metal in the pot is better off than we are. It's melted down, it goes into a mold and comes out quite different. New and shining. Unrecognizable. This is something we can't do with our lives, eh? To where you have been? I'm sorry, Mr. Kletz. Well, don't waste time to sweep up and fix the uh, invoice. Yes, Mr. Kletz. Right, your neck. There's a man in the shop, Mr. Kletz. We're going to see who is it. Stupid boy. Did you want to see someone, sir? Oh, yes, the owner. Is that you? Me, oh, no, I just work here. Mr. Kletz, the owner, is busy now. Can I see him? Well, I don't think he'd be long, but uh, who shall I say wants to see him? Just tell him, please. The police? Do you want to see Kletz? What's it about? Why? What do you think it's about? Well, you took your time, but I knew you'd get to this place in the end. I've been keeping my eyes open, too, but I can't do anything on my own. You wait here. I'll get him out for you. Hey, can I use the telephone? Yeah. Mm. So who it is? Well, it's just a customer, Mr. Kletz. He'll wait for you. Oh. Uh, Winford 325, please. Winford 325? Is that the Anchor Hotel? My name's Swift. I've got a reservation with you for tonight, but I'm afraid we may be a little late in getting there. Well, I don't know exactly what time. We will. That's fine. Thank you. I'm sorry to keep you waiting, but we are busy with the Easter thread. I can show you something. Police. We're, um, checking on some stolen jewellery. And, uh, this is description. We're particularly interested in the silver. Mm. And with this, we would not be interested. How long have you been in business here? Oh, some years. And what sort of work do you do? In this sort of area, what sort of many of us do? Cheap trash, novelties, brooches. All cash transactions. In this business, it's difficult to keep accurate records. Uh, but this stuff is out of my class, I can't help you. Well, I'd like to have a look around the place if you don't You'll mind. be wasting your time. Well, I'll worry about that. Also, you're wasting my time. We're very busy people. I tell you that nobody come to me with this sort of stuff. All right, if you insist, you come this way. Thank you. What's the furnace for? Drink it for tourists. 
Woman here. You take off your coat. What sort of trinkets? You would name them, we got to them. Well, show me some. Some here. Is that silver? Oh, silver! <laughs> you making a joke, huh? He's quite right. This sort of equipment is much too clumsy for silver. Well, show me what you're making. Oh, you will have to wait for the mold to cool. It cools gradually. Oh, you see the casting? Crack! No. How many people work here? Oh, a dozen, sometimes ten, sometimes fifteen. We employ casual labor. Young girls mostly come and go. We cannot keep them. All right, Eric. As you are so interested, Sergeant, perhaps you like to have this one for souvenir. What's it meant to be? A toy policeman. <laughs> Thank you very much. What did you mean by what you said out there about Mr. Kletz? What did you expect me to find here? I mean nothing. Oh, nothing. so you have been talking to my friend Wilfred. I must tell you about this boy, Sergeant. He's having treatment. He's quite harmless, really. But uh, he lives a little world of his own. Huh? I see. Sorry you've been troubled. It's all right. I'll see you to do it. Oh, no, 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 that's all right. Out of here, do you hear me? Haven't we done enough for you? We give you a job, we get you out of trouble. But now, Wilfred, you are on your own. You have had enough of your little tricks. You're spying on us, you're lying. Now get out. Out! I'll see you tomorrow, 10 o'clock, at the office. Yeah. I'll try not to let you down. Look, I really do appreciate what you're doing for me, uh, this job. I'm sure you can handle it. Uh, there's just one thing, old chap. Uh, Max Pence is this weekend at the conference. I'll take care of all that in Oxford. Oh? You'll be there too. I thought you were going to Paris. <laughs> Your wife told me you were. It's very important that you should make a success of this first assignment of yours. I shall um, travel with you on the train out to Oxford tomorrow morning. <laughs> Good idea. You have to keep an eye on me then, eh? <laughs> Someone's got to show you the ropes until you get the hang of things. Yeah, make sure I don't say the wrong thing to the wrong person, eh? Well, give my regards to your wife, won't you? Where did you meet him? Hasn't he told you? Well, he said you were prisoners of war together in Greece, but that was almost 20 years ago. Mm. Well, I had bumped into him again at the regimental dinner last week. Mm. What else did he tell you? What earth you taking such an interest in him for? Lending him money, giving him a job? Oh, he's had a run of bad luck. I'm sorry for him. I quite like him. He doesn't like you. What makes you think that? Hmm? Well, he talks about you. Just your intuition. Don't let's quarrel about him, darling. He's not worth it. Have you got the tickets? The plane tickets to Paris. I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you. Look, we'll have to put this off until next weekend. The conference at Oxford starts tomorrow. But you said you weren't going to it. Yes, well, I've got to now. Why? Why now? Well, I promised. You promised me. You knew all about the conference and you said it didn't matter. We can go to Paris next weekend. No, we can't. You've let me down too often, if it were important. Well, it is. If I'm not there to keep an eye on things, well, I can't. Oh, all right, Tony. Alice. Where are you going? Out! I'm sick and tired of being let down. I'm getting out of Alice. here. I might even go to Paris. Oh, don't be so ridiculous. Where are we going? I'll say something.
Why there? Somebody told me about this hotel. Oh. It's quiet. Can't bear crowds, I just wanted to get away. What's the matter? Nothing. Don't you like the way I drive? I don't really like being driven by anyone. It's a phobia I have. Except by your husband. Except by my husband, but then he's been driving me for a long time. Mm. Why is it a phobia? had an accident in France. The person I was with was killed. Who was it? Who? The person you were with. A man. What were you doing in France? I was studying there. Hmm. I didn't know. I don't know much about you, do I? What was it like? Who? The boyfriend in France. It's a long time ago. He's dead. Were you going to marry him? No. Anything else you want to know? No. It's a funny marriage you've got. You're being a policeman again. I'm from the police. The police? Detective Sergeant Swift. You wish to talk to me? You sound surprised. Uh, I am. What do you wish to know? We think you may be able to help us in some inquiries we're making. What am I supposed to have done? I think you visit here, miss. If you would only tell me what it is about. Just do as I say, miss. Uh, how long have you been in this country, miss? You are from the police. Do you not know? I'm asking you. About six months. That's better. And you've enjoyed yourself here? Yes, I have enjoyed myself. Because it's very different here from where you come from. Well, of course. Well, that is rather a silly question. Now, listen to me, miss. We've had complaints. Complaints? About me? We let a lot of people into this country. From all over the world, we have to be very careful. What are you talking about? Well, some of them have... Uh, funny ideas of what's right and what's wrong. They come over here and mix with ordinary, decent English people. Now look here, you cannot come... Well, it's our job to keep an eye on this sort of thing. If you want to stay in this country... Who has been making these complaints? For one, the girl you share this room with. Miss Wilkinson? That's right. She's told us about things that have happened here in this room. Things that might be all right where you come from. But they shocked her, just as they'd shock any decent English girl. Jean said that. Do you want me to tell you everything she said? No, no. You are quite right, of course. I did not realize. Then you admit it? I do not have much choice. Are you going to arrest me? Oh, well, I hope it won't have to come to that. It's not if you're sensible. I suppose you are looking for evidence. I have some books here. Let me get them. This one will interest you. It, it describes the ritual dances for the god Shiva. You see? It has pictures, too. girl I am sharing this room with, Jean Wilkinson. Tell her what you have just told me. Oh. I, I think I'm going to be sick. It's not much, is it? You wanted it quiet. Do you want to try somewhere else? Do you want to try somewhere else? Why? It's rather charming in a seedy sort of way. Seedy is right. Do you know how much they charge for a room here? No. 
Why should I? Oh! You try. No, no. go ahead. Oh, well, 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 well. Uh, sorry to keep you waiting, but we're a bit short-staffed at the moment. <clears throat> the lovely weather we're having for the time of year. It was a bit different to last year. I think it was the worst I've known since 1947. We were quite snowed up. Now then, what's your pleasure? Uh, whiskey, please. Mm, Same for me, please. The funny thing. Always seems to fascinate the lady. Uh, when you're ready with a drink. Oh, yes. It is required tonight. You know, usually we fill up at the weekend. We have quite a good cart, Red. They always seem to come back, but Friday, for some reason, always seems to be quiet. Now, uh, soda? Uh, water, please. And ice. Oh, I have to get some. Half a tick. Are you going to play with that thing all night? Are you hungry? Not much. Later, perhaps. How can you leave it alone? You are tense, aren't you? This isn't the first time. Hmm? Nothing. Well, that'd be five shillings, sir. Thank you. Thank you. What's the matter? What have you lost? My identity. My ID card with my name on it. Well, what? My police identity card. Oh. oh. <laughs> What's the matter? I'm so sorry. But ever since I first met you, I've been dying to know what you're like when you're not being a policeman. I wanted to show you. I know, I'm sorry. Have you got a phone? The telephone? Oh, it's in the hall, sir. Clet speaking. Oh, yes, sir. Sergeant Swift, I remember. But why are you telling me this? No, no, I, I don't know. I, I, I haven't seen it. N no, I'm sorry. I, I can't help you. What is it? He says that his police identity card has been stolen. He? Ridiculous. No, it is ridiculous. Well, why you say a thing like that, huh? Because he looks for an excuse. Always they are looking for excuses. Tomorrow they will come again, dozens of them. They will pry and they will tear this place to pieces. Oh, relax. You worry too much. You tell him the truth. We have not seen the silver. What different does it make? He comes here, he smells something he doesn't like. Tomorrow they will come again, Yannick. There will be questions. I tell you, the police are just everywhere. They make me sick. Why don't they leave us alone, eh? Well, we must tell our friends, we must clear all this stuff away. We haven't got much time. Well, tell Sergeant Swift to report to me personally when he does come in. Thank you. Yes? Sergeant Swift definitely did not report back tonight, sir. Oh, thank you, Robert. That's all. Yes, sir. Excuse me, sir, but there's all sorts of rumours going about, sir. Rumours? About Sergeant Swift, sir. Perhaps if we knew what he'd really done. I don't follow you, Constable. I don't know that Sergeant Swift has done anything. I know, sir, but he was in a bit of a stew when he went out on and this job. what would you put that down to? A strain, sir. Overwork. He's had a long run of extra duty. Now, listen to me, Roberts. Impersonating policemen is quite a common occurrence, quite prevalent amongst our petty criminals. But what about the police card, sir? The girl was upset. And she could hardly be expected to distinguish between a genuine police card and a fake one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I take it that I can rely upon you to put a stop to these rumours. Yes, sir. Yes, of course.
still in the car. I didn't think we'd get round to dinner, so I ordered you some sandwiches. You can't just have fallen out of my pocket. It must have been stolen. They're quite good sandwiches. Well, I better do something about it. We should go on about it. Stop going on about it. You've lost an arm or a leg or something. I suppose it gets like that. Even when you're off duty. Even when you're with me. The police work 24 hours a day. Oh, what a charming thought. I suppose when you were in uniform, you wore your helmet to bed. Only in winter. Do stop talking about it. Well, what do you expect me to do? Just forget it. I thought losing it might make you human. Eat this. Yeah. Time, Watson. I'm sorry. Detective Sergeant Swift, Scotland Yard. We're making a check on all aliens in the district. Could I see your passport, please? Yes, of course. I have it here. Oh, I forgot. They kept it at the police station when I went to report. Oh, I see. When was that? Yesterday. They needed it for some formalities. Oh. Well, then, your aliens registration. Oh, they kept that, too. Do you have a labour permit? No, I don't need one. I'm not working. You see... Oh, well, that's not mine. These friends of mine do it to earn some money. No passport? No permit? No aliens car? I suppose you tell me yourself about yourself, miss. There's nothing really to tell. I'm here six months as an au pair, you know. Looking after children, learning English. With a very nice family. I can give you their address. Go on. Well, anyway, my time is up and I just spend a few weeks uh, looking on, seeing London. Then I go back to France. And that's all, sir. Would you like to sit down? <laughs> Everything is in a mess. These friends of mine. Friends. You know. Well, they're not really friends. I hardly know them, but they said I could stay here a few days. Do you know what happens to people who lie to the police? It's the truth. Why should I lie? Are one of these friends coming back? I, I don't know. Later. And they left you alone? Baby, No, 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 I'm alone, please. Here's a present for you. Here. Oh, please, you're waking. It's yours, isn't it, that kid? Please, don't send me back home. It wasn't my fault. This, this man where I worked, he made me so many promises. And then when they told me to go, what could I do? I had no money. I couldn't go home like that. Please, please try and understand. Well, I do understand. Just tell me what happened. But what did you do with this man? You must have been a little willing. You're a French girl after all. I know all about French girls. Who are you? You're not a policeman. Let me go! <laughs> Then what happened? I went to Paris. You were running away? Why not? I had to go somewhere. There was no one here to stay for. Does it have to be someone? It was a long time ago. It was a long time ago. You said that before. You were an orphan. You got used to being without people. You didn't have anyone. I wanted them. That's what I mean. It's different.
listen to you. You're a woman. So? So it's different. There was someone in Paris. Yes? And back in this country. And you got married. Yes. What do you expect? I'm not 18 anymore. You're doing all right when you were 18. Thank you. I'm sorry. No, thank you very much. Look, you asked me. I didn't come here to tell you my life story. Why did you come? You asked me. Anything new from the girl? No, sir. Her description of the man was pretty vague, sir. Descriptions invariably are. There's one thing, sir. Both girls were at the same laundromat earlier this evening, sir. Any connection? Anybody suspicious wandering about? A con in the slot machine, sir, and a regular attendant on duty. Modern science coming to the aid of the criminal again. I've got a man watching the laundromat, sir. Excellent. In case Sergeant, whoever it is, should return to his hunting grounds. I follow your reasoning, Constable. A bobby? Proved and unfinished, but unmistakably a bobby. It looks as if it's come straight from the cast. Kets. Kets. Now, why should that name sound familiar, Constable? I expect it's the name of the manufacturer, sir. Indeed it is. It's also the name of a small jewelry workshop, the last one that Sergeant Swift was supposed to check this evening. You know what you said about me losing my card? It might make me human. Sorry. No, no, no. You were right. But if I was human, if I'd been human when we first met, would you have bothered? Am I bothering with you? Yes, I am. I was attracted to you. I didn't like you, but I was attracted to you. Not to me. To a policeman. A tough policeman. Oh, I've met lots of tough policemen. They bore me. But you were soft underneath. I mean, weak. Not weak, defenseless, but asking for something. Now, don't mother me. I don't want to be mothered. What do you want? I told you about the men in my life. It shocked you, didn't it? I'm sorry, but you wanted to know. There are probably lots of things in your life that you've done that would shock me, but I'm stronger than you are, and I won't ever ask about them. I know this situation. It happens to women. You do and see all sorts of things that I couldn't bear to know about. But this situation I do know. You've booked a room here, haven't you? You had it arranged. You signed the register and you picked up the key. You did it all when you went out. Look at me. It's all right. It's all right, darling. You can go on being my tough policeman. You're the only tough policeman I care about. Give me the key. Stay and have another drink if you want to. Police! Who else would come at this time of night? Are you going to let them in, eh? Yes, they must have seen the light in the window. Let them in. I'm sorry to disturb you so late. Yes. I'm Chief Inspector Rose. This is Constable Roberts. Are you Mr. Kletz? No, no. In the workshop, I assure you. Please. Mr. Kletz? Yes? I wonder if you'll be kind enough to help me. I'm making up some inquiries about a Detective Sergeant Swift. Yes. He was here earlier this evening, I believe. About six o'clock. It's quite possible that he mislaid his police identity card. I wonder, could he accidentally have dropped it here? No, he did not. No, we have swept up since then. It is not here. I see. Is uh, this a sample of your work? It is not a proper sample. It came out of the cast too soon. You see, the Sergeant Swift, he wanted to see. 
Really? I yeah. gave it to him like this. You gave this to Sergeant Swift? A souvenir. Indeed. Are you expecting anyone, Mr. Katz? Nobody. Then perhaps you'll be kind enough to see who it is, Roberts. Are you quite sure that you gave this as a souvenir to Sergeant Swift? Yes, anybody will tell you that this is an abortive cast. Mm -hmm. oh, excuse me a moment. They picked this chap up at the laundromat, sir. He was pestering a young lady. I was keeping an eye on her. She was a dangerous alien. Are you in charge here? Chief Inspector Rose. I'm glad you found this place at last, Inspector. This is their headquarters. Indeed. Then you'd better come with me. Mr. Clitz. Do you know this man? His name is Wilfred. He used to work here. That was just a cover. I give him this sack. He's sick in the head. He has funny ideas. Just a moment. A cover. I've been keeping a watch on Clitz. This is the underground centre for all the foreigners in London. He has been in mental... Clitz gives them false papers so they can stay here and carry on their subversive activities, undermining the morals of the British public. They're not even legally in the country. I gave to nobody any papers. I just give people work so they can live. You've done a very good job, Mr. Wilfred. I congratulate you. There are many dangerous aliens in this country. I wonder if by any chance you've run across a particularly subversive young French girl, Annette Charles. I'm glad you asked me about her, Inspector. She was the worst of the lot. I had to teach her a lesson. I see. You dropped this in her room. Where did you get it? I just picked it up. We make a meal. Oh, yes, of course. You saw... Sergeant Swift and George. Yes, I told him what was going on, but he wouldn't listen to me. You no, know, you surprised me. He gave me to understand that he'd given you a special mission to carry on with your investigation. Oh, yes. Yes, he did, because he was going away, you see. Really? Are you sure? Yes, I heard him on the telephone. To the Anchor Hotel, Winford. Only he said it was a secret between us. He was on a special mission there, see. Was it part of that secret that you should use Sergeant Swift's name to pursue your investigations as well as his police identity card? He told you that? Perhaps you'd better let me have the card back now. Sergeant Swift may need it, even at Winford. Thank you. And now perhaps you wouldn't mind accompanying me to the station and giving me the rest of your report. You back. don't believe me, do you? I'm telling you the truth! Robert! Ask them! Ask to see their papers! They ruined the country! All these bullets! You do! Oh. That will do, Robert. Thank you for your help. Mr. Kletz, I do not make our laws, but it is my duty to see that they are enforced. And if ever it is brought to my attention that you've been evading the regulations regarding the employment of aliens... It is a crime to stay alive, to help other I people... I said, if it is ever brought to my attention. Good night, Mr. Kletz.
Hello? Hello. Hello, Penny. Where have you been? Nowhere, really. I was worried about you. Were you? Yes. Well, I, I, I just drove around for a bit and then I found an hotel. Alone? Yes, quite alone. I'm sorry. Yes. About breaking my promise to you, I'm sorry. Oh, worry about that. You always go to Paris some other time. Do you have to go away this weekend, too? Yes, I'm afraid I do. I can't get out of it now. Let me go with you. No, I'm... Well, I should be busy all the time with the conference. You'd hardly see anything of me anyway. I won't be a nuisance, Tony. No, I can't. I just can't. I'm sorry. Hey, I booked a single room. Oh, a single room? I don't mind. It's impossible, Alice. Why? But it just is. Why are you being so evasive? The devil's that? I don't know. Why don't you want me there, Tony? No, I do want you there. It's just that I've made all the arrangements now. No, I can tell you're not telling me the truth. You're afraid of something. Oh, don't be upset. I told you to meet me at the office. I thought I'd better come here. We don't want to miss that train to Oxford now, do we? 